Well, hello again, everyone. Thanks for coming back. To all my subscribers, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate your subscriptions. It makes uh, shooting the videos worth it. You get a lot of great comments, a lot of constructive feedback, and uh, um, you know questions and, and follow up and stuff like that. Uh, it's uh, it's always encouraging um, when you when you know and you see comments on the videos you post. You, you know that people are watching them and uh, makes it worthwhile. So, uh, probably a short one this time. Uh, I don't have a ton planned. Uh, I've got a moment of time here that I thought I'd uh, show what I've been minimally uh, getting to work on a little bit. So one of the things that uh, I showed in uh, two videos ago, uh, prior to the field trip one down to Rochelle, <clears throat> was the, uh, the video I did on the lumber yard that I was starting. And so I uh, finally got around to finishing that up. So here this is, or that is, or this is, whatever it is. Um, so I ended up using, um, and, and I wanted to talk about the paints that I used, actually, because I'm really pleased uh, with the paints overall. Um, I went to the hobby shop recently, and uh, as you know, I believe it's, was it testers that's eliminating their, their paints? Or whoever it is, somebody's eliminating their paints. But... Uh, Unfortunately, it's going to leave a dent, but it's a good opportunity to test out some new paints. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so this is the the completed warehouse, and it's it's nothing special, you know. It's just uh, pretty much a rectangle. Um, but uh, Vinny, as you commented, um, I believe in the video when I showed this, the spray-on adhesive when I applied the um, sandpaper to the roof. Sure enough, it started peeling almost immediately. So I ended up tacking it down with some super glue around the edges, and that seems to be holding really well. Um, so on the roof, I actually went ahead and just used some diluted uh, craft paint, um, just the stuff that I've, you know, you, you pick up at Michael's or wherever. Um, diluted it down with some water, uh, and it ended up being like a, a light gray or this this color gray. And what was nice is, is that it was. It, it blended with the sandpaper color itself and uh, it's got a real we weather worn look to it which is perfect for a, a roof of a large structure like this. If you ever do a, a Google Maps and, and do the you know <clears throat> satellite image and you can get a view of, of rooftops such as if you think about it a, a great way to, to see the tops of buildings if you ever want to see what's what's on top of a building is a lot of times you you can't see them from the the, the roadside um, you know so again I'll I'll probably add some you know like an air conditioning unit over in this corner where the implied you know office part is um, you know maybe a few vents and stuff like that so so I've got a the other thing I did was um, painted up the the doorways and this is just a scrap piece of styrene. I put a piece of double-sided sticky tape on there. And this I actually just ended up using spray paint for. Um, I had a can of flat white. So I went ahead and made these flat white. <clears throat> and made the uh, the door, the roll-up doors and stuff like that a, a gray. So I'll weather these a little bit. Or, you know, put them in and then weather them. So. But anyway, to the paint. Uh, so I, I needed to get... I'd on uh, the concrete project I ended up using up um, all the concrete that I had and I went to the hobby shop and was looking around and, and in a recent model railroader that I got um, Cody Gribno did a, an excellent article about all the different paints that are out there and I think uh, you know the important thing is is that the colors are out there uh, and, and I know we lost the railroad specific colors uh, but there are other manufacturers out there that are trying to do railroad specific colors, um, but also do um, colors that are going to be really close. And and I went with these uh, uh, Vallejo. Um, they come in this. These are the model color I happened to pick up, and I picked up an Iraqi sand, uh, and then a uh, flat red. These airbrushed exceptionally well. I thinned them with uh, Windex. And I, I looked on their website, and they, they recommended thinning with, you know, their, their thinner. But I didn't have any available, so I, I, I want to try this. I'll experiment. So I thinned it um, pretty much, uh, a, 
one third, so three parts paint to one part uh, Windex, and that worked really well. Uh, I didn't adjust my PSI on my airbrush at all. I'm still running about 20 to 25 PSI, uh, but the coat went on exceptionally well. I had great control with it. Uh, it I didn't get any splatter whatsoever. Uh, I masked off the two sections. These are actually two pieces here, or one piece, but I masked it off. I got good crisp lines, uh, a nice flat finish. I mean, it's You'd probably still need to spray this if I was to decal this, but I mean it, it is a nice flat finish. So if you're going to use this colors on uh, freight cars and then have to decal later, uh, this would be a great starting point. So highly recommend Vallejo, uh, at least in the limited experience I've had, take it for what it's worth. Um, and then the other color I picked up was some uh, Model Master, and, and these are all acrylics. I like acrylics because I don't have a spray booth down here, and I feel like I can spray them, and I hopefully won't get cancer in California. But I'm in Wisconsin, so it's not a problem. So anyway, back to the paints. So these Humbrol paints come in these nice little containers. You've got this little flip top uh, that opens up. And uh, again, they've got a great range of colors. I think they've always been more military type colors but like this particular one is it, they got the number up on top and, the, and a color tab if you will but this is a good like rail brown um, you know kind of muddy brown color so Humbrol paints I haven't airbrushed with this I only uh, paint uh, brushed with this uh, but it, it painted on really well good coat the other one is this True Color paint. Now, this is um, this particular color was for a project that I did on my um, Montana Rail Link engine. Now, these are acrylics, but you need to thin this uh, with. Okay, I, I shouldn't say what you should thin this with because I'm not 100% positive. I know that cleanup, though, is not with water. You actually used a, um, a nail polish remover, an acetone, uh, very mild um, chemical. So it, it's not an acrylic per se, but it's also not a solvent-based paint. So I'm, I'm not sure where this falls exactly. Uh, but this sprayed on really well. It sprays on pretty much like an organic uh, oil-based paint. Um, so I will say that this is a really good paint. However, uh, if you're planning on using it, there are warnings on the back here talking about ventilation. So I think this one should be treated more like an acrylic or um, a solvent-based paint, not like an acrylic. So, but anyway, that's that's a little bit on uh, on the paints that I've picked up and started using. Um, so. Other projects, I guess, are going to finish this up, and um, I don't know, I guess we'll throw in whatever else I've got time to work on here. Well, I decided one of the projects I think I'm going to work on, um, limited time, unfortunately, uh, but moving forward with the lumber scene, now that I've got the warehouse structure at least roughly finished, um, I can go ahead and start doing the surrounding area with scenery. Uh, which is personally one of my favorite parts. So uh, I'm using sculpt mold again and uh, again I've, I've shown this many times I think on the channel but uh, you know it's a paper mache product it's just plaster mixed with uh, or cut up newspaper I believe or you know like newspaper material. So I've gone ahead and it's a two to one mixing ratio so I put some mild warm water in, uh, in just this old uh, sour cream bucket and then I'm going to go ahead and scoop in a, a cupful of the sculpt mold itself. And I kind of pack it down. I don't know if you're supposed to, but I, I kind of pack it in there like you would be doing brown sugar or you know something like that. And then uh, just dump it in there. And then I just got an old, you know, spatula and just start mixing around. You know, honestly, it doesn't seem like, I mean, this stuff sucks up water like nobody's business, and you can see it creates a lot of dust. Um, but uh, it says only two to one, so I put a half cup of water in and a cup of the sculpt mold itself. And I'm just gonna keep mixing until I get a good consistency here. 
might have to make a second batch, but I didn't want to make too much and then not have a use for it. So I've done that before. And then, unfortunately, sculpt mold is um, is a stiffer material, so you can't really pour this into um, like a rock mold or anything like that. It's it's you know it's it's got the consistency of a really thick oatmeal, and it, as you can see, it it really doesn't run at all. Um, I'm sure you could form this into rocks, but I use the hydrocal or ultracal for, for that stuff. So, Okay, so now I've got this mix, so I'm just going to go over to the uh, area of the layout that I want to put this in, and we'll start applying it. So basically what I want to do is I just want to build up these areas around the, the foundation um, and in and around this area. So then that way I can come back and paint it and it'll blend into this part of the um, the layout a little bit better. Uh, as you can see, here's the uh, completed, well, almost completed structure. I went ahead and put some roof vents on, an air conditioning unit, and uh, she's all painted up and ready to go. But I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way so it gives myself a little bit more room to work. And then basically I'm just going to go ahead and kind of apply this in here kind of to create a a fillet or a chamfer if you will. I guess this technically would be a fillet. Now I'm not too worried about um, along here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can just come by with a paint stick. kind of clean out the edges a little bit. And so what you can do if you have a little bit of water handy is you can just put your finger in it and start kind of smoothing out the rougher edges of it. And it is sandable so if you uh, don't do this now while it's still wet you can come back later and sand it and, and get a nice smooth surface. Or what some people do is just come back with with plaster over the top. That's an option as well. I know it doesn't look like much at the moment, but uh, once it's once it's dry, I'll paint it. You know, earth color. I picked up a new brown, so I'll paint it earth color and then just sprinkle ground foam. You know, plant trees. It's just to raise the base of the ground up to be level with the concrete pad that I put in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep moving on and I'll I'll show you the end result. So as you can see it doesn't look like a whole lot at the moment but it just uh, it creates a nice blend between the two different uh, levels. So what uh, once it dries it hardens pretty quickly but I don't want to paint it until it's fully dry. So I'll let it dry. I'll paint it a nice earth brown color and then start uh, applying some scenery in and around. So it's several days later and uh, the Sculpt the mold is dry. Unfortunately, now I have to figure out what to do about these areas that I got uh, the plaster, the, the sculpt the mold on the concrete. I might try and just um, see if that'll wash off. If not, I might just have to come by with like a, a wash of some kind just to, to hide it a little bit. We'll have to figure out what to do there. What I thought I'd do though here to start things off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some, I've got, uh, just got some new, uh, the Highball Products Genuine Limestone Ballast. I've got a couple new bags of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. I've uh, just got some left in the old cottage cheese container. Uh, I'm gonna ballast this track up here, and then I think I might go ahead and just ballast this track back here. It's not actually part of this scene. Um, it's actually going to be just a, a warehouse that I did, um, that I made. Uh, I think this is an old pike stuff, possibly. But this sits in the back here, uh, independent of the lumber yard. Um, I'm gonna, actually, I decided I think this is going to be more of like a lumber processing um, center. Uh, not so much bringing in maybe pulp wood or anything like that, but we'll, we'll see. It, it'll give me a location to put the pulp wood flat cars that I have. Um, but with the new warehouse structure that I have, it kind of seems more like a processing center than an actual lumber yard. Um, but anyway, uh, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put some ballast in 
And then just start painting this brown um, and maybe put some static grass in, um, you know, things like that. And again, I got to figure out what to do with this. Here. So a few things here. Uh, I went ahead and this is just a, a brown phew, custom mixed color sample. It was $2 at my local hardware store. Uh, so I picked it up. It's just kind of a, almost like a milk chocolate color, I guess. Um, but it's it's similar to the soil kind of in and around Wisconsin. And, and again, it's just an undercoat, so it'll it'll coat and, and kind of give me the look I want underneath uh, the grass and, and ground foam and stuff like that. So, so something to think about if you're ever at the uh, hardware store. I just walk past the paint department, look at their second hands and, you know, color sample. And for $2, go ahead and pick it up. The other thing... Uh, my dad taught me this years ago. If there's a color that you use a lot, um, and you know, especially for stuff like this, just throw away things, or I shouldn't say throw away things, but things that you don't have to worry about if the bristles of your brush are coming off, or you know, you're going to be doing a paint color over and over. Uh, what I do, and what he suggested, I take a Ziploc bag and I put my um, this is just an old two inch paintbrush uh, that I've had for years. Always use it for the same color. It's always my earth tone color. And uh, I just put it in the Ziploc bag and then I put it in the freezer, which just happens to be right across from my uh, workbench. The paint will freeze and you don't need to clean it. Next time you need to apply this color, pull this brush out, let it thaw out, and you're good to go. And it, it saves you a little bit of time. There's no sense cleaning it up, especially, again, this is just a, the only thing I ever use this paintbrush for is to apply earth tone colors to the layout. And uh, no sense cleaning it. It's, it's kind of a throwaway brush. And, well, I'm saving myself a little bit of time and effort. So if you, you do the same thing here and just toss it in the freezer and you're good to go. So as you can see, I went ahead and applied uh, the paint around the edges to hide the sculpta mold. And then what I did was I just used some uh, ground foam, some green ground foam. And as I was painting, I, I started to get it onto the edges of the, the concrete. Um, and I thought, you know what, if you ever look around at, a, at, at any concrete or asphalt, nature starts to take over if, if you're not diligent about it. I mean, even on your own driveway, it'll it'll start to creep in you know nature takes over and especially if you have ever seen an abandoned parking lot you know that uh, nature definitely takes over wherever it can and so I thought you know what I'm gonna just let the paint get on the edges of the concrete and it'll help hide, help hide the edges of it and then uh, sprinkle down the green so it kinda looks like grass and just weeds kinda growing back out onto the concrete and and the nature encroaching on the on the area a little bit so not perfect, but I think it helps hide the edge a little bit of what's, you know, a sheet of styrene ultimately. So this is very, very rough. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of finishing uh, construction versus roughing it in, and this is just roughing it in. This is a kind of preliminary placement of the buildings. Uh, as you can see, I've started putting in some of the uh, scenery and, and uh, shrubbery and stuff like that. In the background, I've got... Uh, some trees and stuff. Just very, again, very rough, just trying to get it in, get something going here. Um, kind of like the building placement, um, you know, this being a centralized uh, structure to the whole thing, um, just a, you know, kind of an awning where they can put lumber or lumber coming on or off of the, the box cars, um, place to unload and, and load. Uh, your center beams and your bulkhead flat cars, things like that. So again, uh, still a work in progress. Much to do on this, but uh, I feel at least I've got a little bit of time. I wanted to get something up and uh, show you guys some progress that I've been making on this. So for now, this is uh, this is what we got, and it, it will we'll be coming back to it. I think in the in the future. All right. Well, uh, for this video, I, I think that's about. About all I've got uh, time to show, um, you know, with, well, you've heard all the excuses before. It's summer, well, the weather stinks in Wisconsin right now. It's it's March 16th and it's it was 48 degrees today for a high. 
it just has not been an ideal uh, spring thus far. So I'm, I'm really hoping that uh, come summer we'll be um, we're paying it forward and we're going to get some really nice weather. But um, So you're wondering, well, if the weather's so lousy, why aren't you inside? Well, um, spring sports for my kids are still in full swing and uh, they're, they're freezing as they play their soccer and I'm freezing as I ride my bike and race and stuff like that. So unfortunately, um, we just toughen up and, and get out there and do our outdoor activities with or without warm weather. So, but anyway, um, so I wanted to show you guys something uh, that I've been working on when I get an opportunity and uh, the lumber yard's been the focus. Um, I think in the future, in the near future, I'm going to work on the lumber yard some more, uh, but one of the big projects that I want to start is the, the river scene. I'm really excited. I've got some neat ideas and I've been doing some research in terms of you know, gathering pictures and, and what I can um, of the actual bridge itself. Now, on the Wisconsin Central and now currently the uh, Canadian National, uh, this is a three-span um, river uh, crossing across the Wisconsin River, and uh, but I don't have the area for that, so I'm going to two-span it instead. And uh, I've got these great Kibri bridges. Um, this is actually just... Um, well, this is a work in progress, and I, I showed it uh, previous. These, these kits are really nice. If you uh, if you have a need for a steel truss bridge similar to this, um, I highly recommend it. Very easy to put together. Um, and, uh, this is actually one of the finished ones, uh, in case you didn't see it in one of my previous uh, videos. And I've just primered this one with a... Uh, Rust-Oleum primer. It gave it a nice gritty surface. You know, that's the only unfortunate thing about some spray paints is they're, you know, they're meant for larger applications, uh, you know, you know, full-size structures and, and things like that. Um, so their, their mist isn't as fine as, say, an airbrush would be. But that's okay, because for this structure, I'm going to paint it a, a black. I've got that steam-powered black that I showed at the beginning of the video, or whatever black color that was, that's what this is going to end up. And the roughness of this finish will be, I hope, will really show off kind of the texture of, of metal that's been aged, painted once maybe, you know, when it was first uh, completed and then never really touched again and, and just stood the test of time and, and weather and all that good stuff. So. Um, eventually this will get a coat of black and then I'll, I'll, I'm waiting to finish the other one uh, and then I'll, I'll follow up and, and paint them both at the same time. So, so that's future projects. Hopefully I'll be recording that and hopefully that'll turn out. I'm, I'm really excited about that. That'll be my first water scene, uh, first bridge scene, you know, so a lot of, a lot of ground to be uh, broken there uh, in terms of firsts. So, uh, two things though, I wanted to pay, pay it forward and plug a channel. Uh, the gentleman's name is Retrain Run, and of course I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, I've been watching some of his videos lately and uh, he's doing some amazing stuff with a lot of things, but the, the things that caught my eye are his work with um, parking lots and concrete and asphalt. Um, he had one video where he showed a parking lot and then he ripped it out and I'm like what are you doing why would you do that it's it looks great only to replace it with something that looked even better so I highly recommend his channel if you're working on concrete I kinda wish I would have found his channel prior to me putting in the the big concrete slab that I have because I think it would have turned out even nicer um, but for future projects where I have concrete because I want to do that um, city scene where I've got a, like basically a main street that runs down. I might be using his techniques. Um, so really neat stuff. I highly recommend his channel. Go ahead and check that out. So the other thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm really excited about this, is a, a new idea uh, by a gentleman on YouTube. He goes by Modeler Man Mike, and I'll put a link in the show notes to his channel. If you haven't watched him before, I highly recommend it. He has some amazing work. Uh, also shows all of his techniques um, and in structure building, you know how to get square corners, how to paint the windows, how to, you know, just just get an overall realistic looking building. And um, I've I've used his techniques and some of the things that I've done, and um, highly recommend it. But 
what he's doing, uh, he's actually come up with this idea to have um, a live um, session of modeling. And uh, and I, I don't want to speak for him. I, I've, um, we haven't filmed, or uh, the, the show that I'm going to be a part of is coming up in July. I'm really excited about it. It'll be a live chat session where you, you as viewers will be able to view um, us and participate in uh, question and answer sessions. And uh, we, uh, he's still fleshing it all out to, to really kind of um, figure out what, what we're all going to be doing. So I'm, I'm not really 100% positive myself, but I'm really excited about it. He, he's really kind of going all out on this and, and really getting a lot of, of um, people that we've come to know in the YouTube community of Model Railroaders um, and, and putting us all in one place um, and, and giving everybody an opportunity to just kind of have a round robin. And it's kind of neat because so many of us are across the country, across the world. Um, so it'll give us an opportunity to really sit and, and kind of talk and, and discuss things as we um, come together as model railroaders. So highly recommend checking out the promotional video that I'll have on my channel and uh, check out Modeler Man Mike um, and uh, you can see what, what he's doing. So sorry this is kind of a short one. Uh, again, uh, strap for time, want to get something up there. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for sticking with me. I'm hoping to get more stuff up in the near future. So um, we'll see you next one.